All right, so I'm setting my timer for 90 minutes. And I'm gonna make a, write a track with um, just the sounds from the orchestral packs from Ableton's website for live. So that includes orchestral, orchestral brass, orchestral mallets, orchestral strings, and orchestral woodwinds. There's my trombone, my bass trombones. Wow, this is a really this is a really big That's some Star Wars. So I'm just gonna pick out some stuff. Um kind of fill up, you know, maybe a dozen instruments or so. These are great. great there's so much stuff that i'm not gonna pick in advance i'm just gonna wait until i need it and i know i got Orchestral mallets. Well,
that's really nice. too much stuff I crashed yesterday's session somehow These are really good sounding libraries. Since I got a whole string ensemble. I'm not going to get individual ones right now. Save. All right, maybe one more thing and I'm going to start writing. Um, start working with those instruments when I re remind myself what I'm working with here. So um, one thing that I have to commit to, I think, right now in the writing process or else it gets uh, – it helps to commit right now to the um, key and maybe the tempo, but at least the key. And I was thinking B-flat Lydian, which is this. Actually, let me put down – big keys this is a max for live patch that i made that's free and that you can get on the max for live 
community page. That's the key. I'm going to play in and tempo. I can change later, but maybe I'll do really slow and speed it up afterwards, which is always a good trick because I can play more stuff play better at a slow tempo. Let's see. I've already not playing in B flat Lydian, but I'm just playing in B flat. There's no like percussion stuff per se in there. And I kind of hate playing to a click, but let's see if I can get something going quickly to the click and then remove it. whatever that was. Just missing the beginning here. What's going on? Here? 
There we go. All right. Kind of making sense out of my rambly. Playing. Um, but I love using the capture uh, feature, which is this little square in the top. eight bars and I was thinking the next thing would be this <laughs> Thank you. 
like the ending of that part. Is there like some other note left over? Oh, that's what's going on. Got to be careful of how long the MIDI notes are and if they overlap and then I keep starting on the next measure, I get a piece of that chromatic note. something for the beginning part.
guess crashing halfway through or a third of the way through the session is is my thing. And I'm not trying to perpetuate that, so maybe maybe that was the last time. That'd be good. Cool. Welcome back, sorry about the crashing. I like that, so I think what I'm gonna do is struggle through the, what I, my, what I like to do best is to play stuff until I like what I played and then press capture. And hopefully there's not that much cleanup to do at, at, at that point. But like, as you can see here, Things are just off, and, and there will be stray extra notes. So first I clean it up, and then it, it's, it's which is the fastest way to finish the line. Write it in with a pencil or try playing more stuff. It depends. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now I'm just going to be like a save fanatic here.
tuba. me up and it's this nose too.
stuff's not fitting anymore. I'm just going to pull it. Nah. See things are the one I'm after anymore here. Okay, A minute and thirty seconds.
instrument that's more interesting on top of that. Splinky. But they have a motion thing you can do. Right? So. <laughs> I think that's a mean sound to put in. Make everyone think their phone is ringing. That's not what I'm trying to do. Thank you. 
would sound like at a faster tempo just for fun. like it fast I like it fast and slow but it's totally different now where would it go next fun trick is just to copy the MIDI and then change it, but use the same t uh, timing, so you don't have to replay that. That's kind of cool, just as doubling up here of that. <laughs> That's going to sound really much like cartoon oldies. <laughs> yeah.
do another copy of that for bars and then just go up with more stuff from there. Let's just use what we have for sounds. <laughs> instrument here.
too much flutes. Too fluty. That's what happens when I, you fill it up with a lot of stuff. It's really hard to find more space that doesn't really overlap. Let's hear the whole shebang. Why not? I'm going to do a save. A save as number nine. All right, that's good. Is it too fast? Should I slow it back down a little bit?
first part again. I think that might make an end if I could finesse it. That could make the ending. I've never written any kind of music like this before. Maybe if it went back to these two bars right here, I could like thin it out a little bit. So it needs to thin out. So What's that? Not this. Continue to be boom, dum dum dum. very ending.
feels like that chord right here goes off into a new place and I want it to feel resolved. So what can I do? Fix it. But do I want to? No. Uh -oh. It's all Mr. Rogers -y. in there that are a little unresolved. resolved. Is that too much? Does that sound like...
stuff right there. Just need to get the ending timing tight. Because if you're just using MIDI, then there's no excuse to have a sloppy timing. I mean, th there's some timing in here that I'm leaving human, but the very ending shouldn't be like blah, 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 blah. save it and then listen it to it one last time and call it a sesh save as 10 version 10 all right let me do just couple of mixing related things just a couple I've got the limit around I'm gonna put on a tape tape machine <laughs> compression Using the Slate Virtual Console, which I really like. And it just makes things sound super cool. I guess it has to go right there. So I'm just going to copy that. Paste it on these channels here. So each channel gets its own copy of the virtual console. And they all kind of connect together and it gives it this nice non-linearity full mix. Meaning that there's circuitry and crosstalk and that type of thing and accounted for here. Okay, just two more channels. It's a little redundant. Which there's one way to just do that to every channel. Once. Alright, that should do it. And just for in just for example in here what difference it makes.
Yeah. Wow, I've never ever written a piece of music like that before. I always imagined that maybe I could, and I've thought about music like that before, but I've never just held myself to it and made a whole composition just using orchestral samples like that. <clears throat> really cool and fun experience to do, and I would suggest trying it. Um, and Landon, I see your comment um, about the Slate stuff. The digital console stuff is super cool, and the tape it, I use on everything. Not on every channel, but on the master. So it kind of simulates between that and the the channel thing the bus it's like um simulates having a mixer desk and then going to tape and it does things like the tape definitely saturates and does you know it does a little bit of like it's very very subtle compression if it if stuff's hitting it really hard um and i guess maybe the the, the mixer does too but it just adds something dimension magic stuff that I like so much and I also use from the slate bundle um, the bus compressors a lot like this red one even though it's black it, it's called red and I use that a lot a lot almost everything every time and then there's another one um, that I will sometimes use as well, like right on top of that in mid side mode, because this is one's a lot more. Um, it's a dir dirtier kind of sound. From my experience, when I use it, it, it 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 sometimes is too much and it distorts things too much. But if I use the mid side, especially on something like this, there's no drums, it's not really aggressive. It does a lot of cool things to the sides. So here's the. <laughs> If I take it off and you're in headphones, that's stereo wide. But when I put it back on, it compresses the sides. And it just kind of, in, in my imagination, it, it like puts a, like a dome around everything that um, holds it all together. Um, so, so I love when I can get those two compressors working together. Sometimes they don't, but they, sometimes they really do. And, um, then I finish with fab filters L2 and there's lots of good limiters out there, but, um, a lot of times just to finish this off and while we're talking about mixing and kind of finalizing stuff, the really, you know, polished sound happens when I use more than one limiter in a row subtly. So if I set this to like about four times oversampling in a just one dB of gain, and then let's use the just kind of all around setting then I could like duplicate it. And so here's just one of them working. And when I add the second one, cook stuff really quickly if you do this and and you do it in an extreme way then all bets are off but if you do it very subtly just a little bit each level it's like you like bring it up to this level of loudness where everything's nice and clean and all holding together and then you like put it through another microscope almost and, and see if it can handle that. And then you could put it through another one. And so like, you know, it's not that strange that I'll end up with three subtle stages of limiting at the end of my chain, as opposed to just one 
limiter just really struggling, it'll be like the first limiter just takes off like the little peaks. The second limiter comes in and like works a little harder on the material. And the third limiter maybe come down and control the final sound. And I'm, you know, I'm sure that some buddy would say that maybe some mastering engineer will tell me don't do that but that's what has worked consistently for me and what works well so that's my chain is usually um the mix bus you know the console thing tape bus compression if it can handle it and not much like really low settings 1.5 low threshold this drive isn't distortion it's not makeup gain it's just kind of like voltage or something you know it just gives it a little bit more character um so i push that a little but i'm going for like a li little bits of everything as opposed to any one thing kind of working too hard you know and then the only other thing i would do or i do often is use um soothe too on stuff that's really um resonant and harsh and maybe like something that just has a lot of highs and high hats and smashing things and noises and stuff electronic music especially or guitar that has a lot of brightness to it you know soothe will take out some of that harsh stuff and i'll put that somewhere around here in the chain maybe after the um the bus compressors and you know and then sometimes i'll bring in uh an eq as well and dynamic eq is the best because i'll set if i like if something is too loud of some frequency i'll specifically choose that frequency and have the eq um bring the volume down just when it offends so the other rest of the time, it's not like you're not cutting the highs all the time. You're just cutting them when that one cymbal crash is too peaky in the mix. So that's kind of my um, whole mixing, mastering, kind of self-mastering chain. When I'm going to just push something out um, full volume, you know, if I'm sending it to someone else to master it, then I will go way more subtle. I won't do any of this limiting stuff and all this compression and, and everything. I might be a lot more gentle. But if I'm doing it myself, that's the magic um, workflow that I've arrived at after a long time. And you, most of that stuff is in the Slate bundle, which I feel good about um, subscribing to and I have for a long time. Um, the fab filter stuff is awesome as well. And then I use, uh, live effects, native effects from Ableton for a lot of stuff. I really, really use the glue a lot. You can press rank and sort things by how often you use them. This is like a new version. So it kind of resets every time I update, but, uh, the glue is always the first thing because I use glue on almost every channel a little bit sometimes you know just to keep the things together all right I want to hear that last bit again <laughs>
Cool. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you had fun too. And I'll be doing more of these um, kind of themed uh, timer beats uh, sessions because it's, they're fun. And it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting, just as interesting for me. So I uh, hope you all have a good day. See ya.